Hi. Hi. What's your name? My name is Sarah. What's your whole name? Sarah Florence LeCompte Curtis. I see. And you are related to someone who is pretty famous. What's his name? Um, Heber Curtis. Heber Curtis. Mm -hmm. And what kind of scientist was he? He was an astronomer. An astronomer. And we're celebrating the 100th anniversary of what event? The Great Debate. The Great Debate. And that was a debate between your great, great grandfather, Heber Curtis. And Harlow Shapley. And Harlow Shapley, who was the chair of astronomy at Harvard. What did they debate in the Great Debate? Well, they debated two things. One was the size of the known universe, the distances to the stars. And the problem was that they had uh, telescopes that were not nearly as advanced as we have now. We have telescopes out in orbit right now. But back then it was all optical telescopes uh, like the one we have a picture of right here. Why don't you show the picture of Heber um, at, I believe that's the Crossley reflector. And so they were all optical telescopes and they could only do so much with them. So they were trying to measure the size of the galaxy or the known universe. And at the time it was not clear if there was just one galaxy or if there were many galaxies. Many galaxies is the island theory of the universe and one galaxy is there's just one galaxy. Now what did Heber argue? That there was only one galaxy or that there were multiple island, the island theory of the universe? There were multiple. That's right. That was Heber's argument. And then they also argued about the size of the galaxy or the universe. And Heber was correct about the island theory of the universe. That was his argument, that there was not just one galaxy, but there were multiple galaxies out there. And we had trouble measuring the distances. And it wasn't until three years later, after the Great Debate, that they actually did start to be able to measure the distances to these galaxies. So Heber was right about the island theory of the universe, and he was a little bit wrong about the distance uh, of the galaxy, the size of the galaxy, and Shapley was a little bit more correct. All right, so that's the great debate, uh, and that's what we're celebrating, but what happened after the great debate? What happened to the Curtis family? How many children did Heber have? Heber had four children. He had uh, Binks. His name was Baldwin, but everyone called him Binks. And then there was Rowan, who was my grandfather. And then there was Alan. And then the lone daughter was Margaret. Now, Binks was a physicist, and he worked on the Manhattan Project. Margaret was a professor of English at the University of Washington. Alan uh, was not an academic. And Rowan did his degree at Stanford in chemistry and he was a chemist. And he worked for Sherwin Williams and was part of the team that invented latex paint. So an army of uh, of academics and scientists. What did my great grandfather Rowan do? Well, he was a chemist and he went to school at Stanford and he tragically died only a few years after Heber. Heber died in 1942 and Rowan died in 1946 and he died of a heart attack um, or a stroke. It was unclear but he um, just died very suddenly at his home and they lived too far from a hospital to take him there quickly. So he died 
uh, when my father, uh, Robert Sr., uh, was just 16 years old. Who were Rowan's children? Well, Rowan had uh, Robert Sr., Robert, my dad, Bobby, <laughs> and his older brother, Danny. And Danny was an engineer who worked on the Apollo space missions. Uh, he was part of the team that invented the microwave oven for the Apollo space shots. And my father was not an academic. My father was a house builder. Um, and he built his own house uh, and was quite proud of that. Who are you? Who am I? <laughs> well, I'm Robert Curtis. And I'm Heber's great-grandson. What do you do? What do I do? <laughs> <laughs> well, I studied mathematics at the University of California, Santa Cruz, and I came this close to studying astronomy. And I, in fact, went to a number of observations at Lick Observatory, which is where Heber was a, uh, an astronomer in his early part of his career and I almost decided to study astronomy but I learned that astronomy is the science of being tired and cold because you had to do all your work and you're always cold and I'm always cold anyway so being even more cold and tired on the top of a mountain uh, was less appealing than being a mathematician in a nice warm uh, room with just a chalkboard to do. So I teach uh, university mathematics and I'm also a programmer. Now let me ask you, what do you do, Sarah Curtis? Um, I go to sixth grade and yeah. And what are your favorite subjects? History. History. I see. And do you like astronomy at all? Meh. Meh? Meh. <laughs> Just a little? Sometimes. Meh. Maybe. Mm. That's okay. Did you ever meet Heber? No. Heber died in 1942, and I was born in 1965, so that's, you know, 23 years difference. So I never had a chance to meet him. I have met people who did meet him. I met a professor uh, at the University of Michigan who did meet him and did know him um, in his later years. He was a student. Um, so I never met him, but Heber wrote a letter to his mother every two weeks and then after his mother passed, he wrote a letter to his children every two weeks without fail from the time he was 18 years old until he passed away uh, at the age of 72 or so. Um, so he wrote these letters to his family and they are at the Bentley Historical Library at the University of Michigan and they are in five volumes, thousands and thousands of pages. And after Heber died, his daughter Margaret had somebody type them, retype them. Now, some of the letters in the uh, archive are original letters, and some are retyped letters. I think it's because he uh, must have handwritten some of the letters. It's, it's quite unclear why some of them were retyped and some of them weren't. But in any case, um, all of the letters are at the Bentley Library and you can read his entire life story from when he was 18 and he was a professor, um, uh, an instructor at, at the College of the Pacific, which then became the University of the Pacific, uh, originally in San Jose, uh, then they moved to Stockton. Um, but he wrote uh, these letters uh, and that chronicled his entire life. Um, so I've read those letters twice uh, now. I read them once. There's also a copy at the UC Santa Cruz archives. I read them there once when I was a student. 
And then I also went to Michigan and read them again at the Bentley Library, which has a more expansive set. Um, and so by, by reading these letters, I really feel like I, uh, I know the man. I learned about him from those letters, his life. He didn't write too much about um, the science that he was doing. He did a little, and he wrote a lot about the expeditions that he went on. He would pack up and go to various places uh, around the Earth to do solar um, observations. So when there was going to be an eclipse and the eclipse was going to pass over Manchuria, he would pack up and take uh, 10 or 20 people and all of the equipment to go take these photos of the solar eclipse, uh, which was um, part of the main research that he was doing. Um, so, these letters all exist in Michigan. Do you want to go read these letters one of these days, Sarah? Maybe. Maybe. Okay. I guess that's as good as I'm going to get from an 11 year old. Yeah. 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 All right. Sarah, do you want to go read these letters in, in Michigan at the Bentley Library? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sarah, we've got a nice photo of you at the Harvard Observatory. Mm -hmm. When was that taken? Like last year, I think. Yes, that was two years ago. Wonderful picture of you sitting in the same chair that Professor Shapley and your great-great-grandfather, Professor Curtis, must have sat in during their visits at Harvard. So it was a wonderful picture almost 100 years later Sarah, who do you think won the great debate? Curtis. Yeah, that's the way our family remembers it, too. Um, some people say it was kind of a tie. Nah. He was a little off with the distance, but that's just math. He had the right idea. That's the more important thing. <laughs>